although Scandinavian art was placed um, somewhat temporally within the uh, uh, the same chapter as Ottonian and Anglo-Saxon, um, in some books, and in fact the original uh, text of this, uh, original version of Snyder's text, uh, Scandinavia was attached to the northern traditions. And I think you'll see why, uh, because we're going to see the continuation of this animal style and these interlace patterns uh, that we saw with uh, northern art and uh, with the uh, so-called Celtic or uh, Hiberno-Saxon art. Uh, and you'll also find this in Scandinavian art. Uh, all of our examples actually are from Norway. Uh, but uh, I want to start out giving you a little bit of, just a little bit of background into this. Uh, we often hear about the Vikings or the Northmen or the Norsemen who plundered Northern Europe. Uh, you may remember that they destroyed the monastery at Lindisfarne in uh, Britain, right uh, up in Northern Britain, right where it meets Scotland today. Uh, there were attacks in Britain. There were attacks in France. Uh, in France, uh, the Vikings came as far inland as Saint Denis. Uh, even destroying uh, the monastery at one point, or Paris, or Tours. Um, however, it's important to remember that not all medieval Scandinavians were Vikings. The word Viking means a pirate, uh, and it does not have any pleasant uh, Pirates of the Caribbean fiction context. Uh, they are sea raiders. They are out for plunder, and that's what they do. However, many, and probably most, of the medieval Scandinavians were farmers and traders. And uh, they were actually converted to Christianity uh, beginning in the late 10th century. Uh, in Norway, uh, the conversion, of course, conversion takes a while. Usually what happens is the king will be converted, and then it takes a while uh, to convince all the people uh, and to uh, explain the new religion to them. Uh, so in Norway, the conversion took place from around 900 uh, into the early 11th century. And in Denmark, uh, Christianity was introduced just slightly later, around 960. Even though Christian, some of the art we'll be looking at are, is Christian art, uh, not the first thing, but some of the things that we'll look at, and are indeed part of Christian churches, pre-Christian artistic traditions continue and they often are continue to be used in Christian art, which is um, you know, what we have seen, uh, which is what we have seen with um, other northern tradition arts. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Augsburg ship burial, or the Augsburg ship, uh, which is in the Viking Ship Museum in Oslo in Norway. And You'll find a variety of dates as widespread as 800 to 850. Uh, your book narrows it down a bit to 815 to 20. So we'll use we'll use that date. Um, and this was actually a ship burial in which uh, some of the ships survived, as you will see. Uh, there were two women who were buried here with grave goods in a wooden longboat. Uh, they think that the burial might have been around 850, perhaps a little earlier. It is a pre-Christian burial, and it was discovered in 1904 on the west coast of the Oslo Ford near Osberg. And you can see here the reconstruction of the ship and uh, many of the decorations. And uh, this uh, wonderful prow that spirals up and the interlace patterns and the animal patterns on the boat itself. Buried with it uh, were several head posts. In other words, these are posts uh, with animal heads on them. The function is not entirely uh, certain. Uh, they must have been placed over something. Um, but as you can see, there, this, this particular one, which is the one that's always reproduced, is uh, a fascinating animal. Okay, let's start with that. Okay. Among the grave goods, were a animal head post. 
Now, we're not quite sure what the function of this was. Uh, we're not even quite sure what kind of animal it is. It's often called a dragon. Uh, because it certainly uh, doesn't correspond exactly anatomically to any uh, any animal. Uh, you know, could it be a, a stylized lion, lion by someone who's never seen it? Let's just call it a dragon uh, a head post. And the mouth is open as though the beast is roaring. It's decorated with wooden patterns uh, that are very common to the patterns we've seen in northern metalworking, uh, some of which we've seen from the British Isles, for example, but it's also widespread uh, beyond those borders, as you can see, into uh, Norway uh, with the uh, uh, interlace patterns. And uh, you have on the, you have a variety of the different carvings. Uh, the interlace pattern on what seemed to be the uh, cheeks, the neck, the jowls of the beast. You have cross hatching and parallel grooves, which are on the uh, what the, f the face, and. If you look very closely, you may find patterns that are carved in little circular forms uh, that we may remind you of granulation, the little uh, golden circles that are attached uh, to some of the metalwork. You've got these checkers with alternating horizontal and vertical lines with on the face and the snout, uh, lozenges in the ridges above the eyes, uh, and sort of uh, uh, carved uh, parallel lines uh, in this arc uh, that is the uh, edge of the mouth. So, you know, abstract surface ornament on this fanciful creature who may be a dragon. This use of the animal style and the interlace pattern also carries on into the decoration of the churches. And we're going to look at a sculpture at one of the stave churches in Urns in Norway. Uh, this dates from about the 12th century. And uh, there are several patterns on the wall of the exterior. Uh, one which seems to be around a doorway, uh, but others are you know, purely decorative, uh, with these uh, quadrupeds <laughs> uh, with long necks, long, uh, long legs, and long tails uh, that intertwine. And of course, this reminds us very much of the animal interlace that we've already seen uh, in Hiberno-Saxon uh, manuscripts and in uh, the metalwork. And presumably, what they've done is taken uh, those kind of designs and here, uh, carved them into wood. Uh, there's lots of wood in Scandinavia, and uh, so wood seems to be a favored material. Uh, it's also been suggested that these particular carvings could be influential on later Romanist stone carving on church portals. Uh, there are still some surviving examples of these wooden churches known as stave churches uh, that were built in Norway uh, in the 11th and 12th centuries. And uh, they think that there probably were around a thousand of them that were built. Uh, however, uh, not that many survive. There's uh, 28 that survive. And the reason that these 28 survived was because the timbers had been tarred so that they uh, could survive the uh, effects of what, yeah, keep out insects and weather better. And they were uh, built on stone foundations rather than just directly on the ground. Now, we have here also a diagram uh, showing what they look like inside. Uh, the staves are beams, as you can see, sometimes as uh, posts, uh, sometimes as beams going across. Uh, this is all made out of wood. And so uh, you have essentially these, these uh, staves or heavy uh, posts rising up from the foundations. Uh, and then they support uh, cross beams and also very steep, uh, very steep gabled roof. And uh, they extend out from the framework uh, to form what would be the aisles. 
The exterior walls are made of upright wooden planks, and there are wooden shingles on the roof. And as you can see, uh, there's these little, uh, what, dragon life, uh, little creatures uh, that are up on the uh, ridge post.